what I want to do now is talk about the next part of your research. And what's going to happen is you're going to use your mind map to develop a strategy. So you've got your mind map. Now what we've got to do is we've got to talk about the tools. We might save that for another time or just a few minutes. And then we've got to talk about your terms. Now, terms is super important, and we're going to do a little exercise because you have to make this jump from your mind map to the terms that you're going to use for your searching. And unfortunately, there's this huge invisible barrier between the way that we talk and think. You guys better be copying this down. This is really important. And the way that this is organized, information is organized totally differently. I'm just going to put info organization here. So there's a way that we talk and think about information, and then there's the way that it's really organized, formally organized. Another way to think of this talk think column is that this is the same thing as keyword or the same thing as natural language. Now your job in this developing a language strategy is to put down what you think you're going to look under. And that's where you take the words from your mind map. Then you're going to figure out how the information is organized in these different tools. The language that the book catalog uses is different than the language that the database uses, which is different from the language that is available through Google. So you've got to have a good grip on the possibilities for your words. So the way the information is organized is the same thing as the subject heading or what we call controlled vocabulary. We're going to do a little exercise about controlled vocabulary really quick. You're not going to forget this exercise. It's going to stick in your brain. So um, let's say you and your spouse are having an argument about whether or not to spank your children, whether or not spanking is good. So you do, because you want to win the argument, you're going to look up some information that proves that it's OK or that it's not OK. And you're going to do what people, students, actually normally do, and you're going to Google spanking. What do you think that your search retrieval will be if you Google spanking? A whole bunch of porn. OK. So another way to say that is, do you think that you'll get credible information from that strategy? No. Stuff that you can use in an academic setting. OK. So the mistake, that the strategy mistake that people are making is they're choosing the wrong tool, they're choosing Google, and they're choosing the wrong term. They're choosing spanking, OK? Let's set aside the idea of the tool for just a minute. And let's talk about the term. How could you compensate for that word? How could you change your result? Discipline. OK, discipline's good. If you Google discipline, you'll be sorry. OK. OK, if you put in child discipline, that might work. What else do you guys have? Parenting. Ah, OK, so I'm going to put in parenting. I like that one. What else do you guys have? OK, so he said corporal punishment. Now, I want to talk to you about this word. If you know about spanking, or you've ever been spanked, or you spank, have you ever heard a parent say to a child, I'm going to count to three, and there's going to be a corporal punishment incident? Yes. Yeah, you have. <laughs> wow. <laughs> OK, I have never personally heard that. I've never said, you know, heard anybody say that. So is this the way that we normally talk or think about spanking? No. Okay. Would that come to your mind if you were researching? No. OK. One student was so cute last week. She said, capital punishment. 
Well, that's where you cut off somebody's head or put them to death. And, and <laughs> it wasn't quite where we were going, but I've made that mistake before. So you want to get the term correct, right? Well, here's what you're going to do. I'm going to show you one of the tools that you're going to use, and this is a heavy duty tool, the place where I want you to start, okay? So what you're going to do is go to the library homepage. You can access this 24 seven. You're going to do frequently used databases and you're going to scroll down to where it says opposing viewpoints in context. That's the database that you want to use. So here it is right here, opposing viewpoints in context. If you're off campus, it's going to ask you for your student ID card. So now what I'm going to do is go there. Here's where you put in your student ID card. Okay. This is what's happening now, is you're getting one kind of search box for everything. So let's put the cursor there and think about our mind map and what's your job again? To put in what you think it might be under? What are we going to look up first? Let's do, um, I don't think they're going to use um, the idea of dead world or I world. Should we use I world? I don't know. I usually hear about um, not just social, well, social networking. I do that. Let's do social networking. And that may not be the way that you want to develop your argument. Let's just take a look and see what happens when we do this. This one says, did you mean social networking, social networking websites, social networking websites? And it has only two academic articles. Do you think that's all that it has? Or do you think that's a language barrier? Do you think we need to choose another tool? Okay. So let's look at this, cyber conflict, edge of chaos, crypto hierarchies and self-organization in the open source movement. Yikes, I do not want that. Parallel visions of peer production, I don't want that either. So let's go back and let's look through here and see if we have anything that might give us a clue. Well, there's society and culture, there's law and politics, I think we need to go maybe to issues and see if we can get some ideas. Okay, so these are the big issues. Do you guys see anything that would work? You think technology would be good? Whoa, look at that. Technology and society, awesome. So let's click on that. Because really, that's where this is going. That's a technology and society. So that's one that you want to keep on your list of words that work. Okay, so we're going to scroll through here. And if you look along the, this as it develops, there's audio. So there's some things you can listen to or watch. There's expert picks. There's videos. Ooh, the slippery slope of texting might be really cool, right? There's viewpoints. Viewpoints are only pro or only con. And they're somebody's very well informed opinion. They document what they say there. So that's really good. There's reference books and then there's news. So that'll be things from newspapers. And you can go on and there'll be magazines, academic journals, and statistics. So this is kind of one stop shopping to get all kinds of different levels of information. I'm going to choose one and I'm going to, oh, this is funny. Here's the dating scene, okay? I'm going to show you guys what happens when you find something that you like. You click on it, it opens it up, you can listen to it. Ah, now see, this is something that's really interesting, something that's happening again and again. It says the full text is at time.com. Now, I think that's kind of a cheat, and that upsets me a little bit, but at least you guys know that that exists, and if we want it, we should be able to just click there and go straight there without doing any further add-ons or steps. But you know what? Oh, here we go. We are getting some ads. That's kind of a bummer. How do I love me, or how do I love thee? Let me tweet the ways. 
So I can print this or I can email it, I can send it to Facebook, okay? So that's kind of cool and it gives you the author and the date. I'm going to go back to where we found that. I'm going to show you the key part of this. You want to use this part right here where it says citation tools and click on that and say you want MLA and it will formulate that citation for you then you can copy and paste it into your Works Cited page. Is it right there too? Sure. <laughs> we will. We'll, we'll say. What did you say? Isn't it right there? <laughs> That's a generic oh, okay. format. It's not MLA or APA specific. Good question though. Okay? So let's look at this. I mean, how do I let me let me choose ways? No, 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 no. I think that looks perfect. But Jean was right, and I don't know if all of you guys heard her. The one downfall to getting help from the databases is some of the databases really mess it up. And you need to always take responsibility for the work you submit and make sure that that MLA citation is correct. Yep. The tool that exists for citations is in the database, okay. not on the website. So what they did was they cheaped out and they used a link out to a website rather than put the information on the database. That's rare. Normally the information is there. Okay? So I think class is over. One of the things that we didn't get to is the information timeline. So while you guys are neatening and straightening up your stuff, I want to ask you where you would look if you wanted the most current information. On the internet? Is that pretty much it? Okay. So I want you guys to think about on the internet and refocus to the databases and think periodicals, magazines, and journals. Those are the ones that are going to be always the most current, okay? Where would you look if you wanted established information, like the facts that have existed for a long time? Nice. Okay. So that's just a mini refresher, all right? Are you guys equipped now to do your assignment, do you think? Okay. All right, if you have any questions, remember your time limit and come talk to us.